Hello. So, uh, electrical energy, and we've talked about this in other ways uh, earlier, but um, we'll, a, an example or a way to talk about it now is it's just uh, in terms of a definition. Um, hello. Uh, in terms of a definition, we can think of electrical energy as being energy due to charges that are interacting with each other and maybe moving other charges. Um, an equation, uh, if we take power times time. Um, power is how quickly we use energy. So if we take power times time, that ends up giving us this electrical energy or energy in general. Um, and maybe I'll do this. I'm going to put a parentheses around this bugger. Uh, the current times the uh, potential difference is the same thing as electrical power. So we're saying another way to calculate this is to say that energy is electrical power times time, current times the potential difference. And <clears throat> if this is an equation, things like that, we would just say big E with the subscript E. This one wouldn't be bold or italicized or anything like that. This is energies are just an, uh, an amount. There's uh, no direction to them. We've talked first semester and a little bit this quarter uh, with uh, how some things have a direction. And so we'd say to the left or to the right or positive or negative. And po there's possible to have positive and negatives for energy, but that has no indication at all on the direction, really just uh, purely amounts and all energies in the metric system measured in joules um electric potential or aka voltage um energy per charge we've done this one before so one way to think about it is it's the electrical energy divided by charge that's one calculation uh totally legit uh calculation for electric potential or voltage uh from ohm's law if we rearrange ohm's law that we did with uh um, we started off looking at Ohm's law as current is potential difference over voltage. If we rearrange that, we can solve for voltage and we've got her there. Um, if we take the relationship for power and we rearrange and solve for voltage, uh, we've got that one there. And then there are, again, a bunch of different ways to uh, you know, rearrange and solve for different things. Like if we solve for current here, we could then put that in here and different things like that. It gets to be, um, there are a lot of different substitutions and things that we could do. Um, need to admit somebody, there we go. Um, what else? Um, there is one other way, like if you're ever looking this stuff up, there's a, a weird script E sort of a version that people will sometimes talk about for electric potential. They'll call it the electromotive force. Um, I don't know if I can find a good uh, font for that. Um, I wonder if their capital E would do it. Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, so that is sometimes referred to as an electromotive force, which is the same thing as electric potential. Um, and volts are the same thing as, as joules per coulomb or energy per charge. Um, potential difference, just the difference in electric potential or the voltage at two different spots. We've looked at that already. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, then mechanical power. Uh, mechanical power is how quickly mechanical energy, like gravitational energy, kinetic energy, those sorts of push and pull sorts of things where you think about maybe physically grabbing something. Um, mechanical energy uh, or mechanical power is uh, how quickly mechanical energy uh, ends up getting used. Excuse me here. <clears throat> Oh, so I remembered to mute the mic for you, but the recording, not so much. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, clearing my throat there. Um, so the electrical, or pardon me, mechanical power, uh, power is energy over time, how quickly that transfers. Uh, symbol at equation would be P, and power is joules per second, energy per time, joules per second, and that's the same thing as a watt. Um, and then... We've uh, done an assignment with this sort of a thing before. Um, and uh, I just wanted to make sure we had it recorded in a note, set of notes sort of thing somewhere. 
Um, so we've talked about the loop rule, uh, and I'm just adding the, the two terms, the two words, electric potential loop rule uh, up on top here. So the electric potential loop rule says that if we go around a loop, the total electric potentials as we go around them, if we add those, those electric potential differences as we go around a loop, they should add to zero. So the outer orange loop, there's uh, that one's that orange line isn't quite as obvious, but there's an orange line on the outside here. So if I follow that orange loop, if I start around here, I've got a potential difference provided by the battery. And then the charges that take this outer path, there's a potential difference used by the light bulb, and then we get back. So if I do the potential difference, or if I do the, the potential difference for the battery, that should be positive. It's giving energy to the charges. Uh, and I add to that the potential difference from that top bulb in the orange loop. That should be negative. That top bulb should be taking energy from those charges. If we add those up for a loop, it should add to zero. Uh, and then if we do this for the bottom loop, the same rule still works. The If we do this for this bottom blue loop, um, we gain some energy from the battery, lose energy going through the bulb. And as we add those potential differences, they add to zero. And remember, this is the energy at a location. And sometimes I think it's helpful to think about just following one charge because one charge can only take one path at a time, right? So if we follow a charge that starts in the bottom right corner down here, let's see, I'll try to do this. <clears throat> that starts in the, um, whoops, um, let's see, there's a way to, nope, that's not the one I wanted. Darn it. There's a keyboard shortcut that I often use that um, is the way to zoom in on this darn spotlight. Well, I'll leave it as it is. So if we're looking at the bottom corner here is where we're starting as a charges location, that charge then goes through the battery gains potential, goes through the wires, the wires have no effect. And then if we say this one charge in particular then goes to the right, as that one charge goes to the right, it loses energy going through the bulb and then goes back to the battery and starts that process all over. So um, that charge can only take one path at a time. The next time through, it might go through the battery, gain energy, then go all the way up to the top and lose energy going through this bulb but it's, you know, per path, we have this rule that really seems to hold true. Um, and electrical power. Uh, electrical power is how quickly uh, electrical energy is transferred or used. It's not always... Uh, to say it. It's not always 100% used for what you would like it to be used for. Uh, in some cases, that electrical energy goes to doing what we want it to do, uh, but almost always it also produces maybe like a little bit of heat or something like that. Um, so uh, like if you ever charge your phone or your uh, Chromebook or whatever other devices you have, you might notice sometimes that the little charger gets warm. Well, that's not a desired outcome. That's not something that is intended to happen with that electrical energy. It's just supposed to charge your device. Um, so uh, electrical power, we talked about it or referred to it briefly up above. That's the potential difference times current. And if we remember that one volt is one joule per coulomb uh, and current is measured in amps and one amp is a coulomb per second, we can see that a joule over a coulomb times a coulomb over a second those coulombs cancel and we get joules per second, which is a watt. So our units still work. And that's one of the ways in, in physics we can kind of double check to make sure that we're not just making stuff up. Hey, the units end up working out. This seems like a reasonable thing. And so if we look at the equation for electrical power, one way to calculate it is like that. If we use Ohm's law um, and in Ohm's law, potential difference is current times resistance. So I can sub in that another way to calculate electrical power is this, I squared R. Um, and lastly, uh, I guess maybe not lastly, there are probably some other ways we could go through and substitute, but for us, this is probably the last one. Um, 
uh, electrical power could be the potential difference squared divided by uh, the resistance uh, power and joules per second or watts. Um, this last one we might not use. We're definitely not using this one today. We might use it in the future. There are a couple of things that we've done in the past. Um, I'm just throwing this on here uh, um, because it's it's a reasonable thing. So efficiency compares uh, the energy we put into a job to the energy we get out or the usable energy that we get out. Um, and it's always less than 100%. That's just always true. Um, no matter what you're doing, there's always some energy that becomes something that we don't want it to do. Um, again, like I just said, with charging things, we always often produce a little bit of heat, uh, things like that. So the energy, or pardon me, per efficiency is a percentage. So it's a percent efficiency. Uh, and it's usable energy output goes on top. And total energy input goes on bottom. And then we just multiply those two times 100 to make it a percent. And that's that. Um, all righty. Uh, and then when we're done with class here, uh, I think I have this uh, set of notes. I should change this to the word notes up in front. Um, this uh, is going to be available on Google Classroom. Uh, after class time here too. So uh, you'll be able to check that there.